Hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. As always, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, so make sure to give this video a like, but also leave a comment giving your thoughts on everything currently going on. Okay, so President Biden joined his good left-wing friend in Jimmy Kimmel last night, where I don't think any of us were really all that surprised that he never faced any real tough questions. To start things off, they discussed gun control, saying that they can't really ever get anything done solely because of the Republicans being intimidated by the NRA. Also that this is not your father's Republican Party. This is a MAGA party. Kimmel then asked Biden, why doesn't he just pass an executive order on gun control since, of course, former President Donald Trump, quote, passed those out like Halloween candy. Biden responded, I have issued executive orders within the power of the presidency to be able to deal with everything having to do with guns, gun ownership, and all the things that are within my power. But in Biden's mind, at least, he doesn't want to emulate Trump because Trump, apparently, was an abuser of the Constitution. This, of course, is coming from someone who confirmed repeatedly that as president, he did not have the constitutional authority to extend the eviction moratorium that the CDC issued under former President Donald Trump, but then he proceeded to go ahead and did it anyways. Despite knowing that the CDC extending the eviction moratorium would be illegal, he encouraged that they go ahead and do it anyways and make the courts put a stop to it. In the interview, President Biden also claimed that he's made some real moves under his administration, at least when it comes to climate change, and that apparently, we have the fastest growing economy in the world, this with 8.6 million new jobs. Biden also took credit for unemployment going down to 3.6%, as well as the deficit reduction last year of $320 billion, and said that this year we would be reducing the deficit by $1.7 trillion. Of course, when Joe Biden says he'll be reducing the deficit by a certain amount, the government will still be spending more money than what they're taking in, which of course really isn't making too much progress. Also, considering that all the money that was spent in 2020 from the COVID relief bills, it really wouldn't have been that difficult in order to reduce spending in 2021. Of course, sadly, this has been a problem on both sides of the aisle, with the last time that the United States spent less money than what we took in was in 2001 under the Bush administration. Once Barack Obama took office in 2009, the deficit ballooned on a yearly basis, running trillion dollar deficits for his first four years in office. The Trump administration, of course, also ran deficits as well, but of course, the biggest deficit came in 2020 from all the handouts during the pandemic. So at some point, a lot of the current government programs either need to come to an end, or we need to find where we can reduce spending elsewhere, whether that be a reduction in defense spending perhaps, or really whatever else. In some other news, an armed suspect, one that I will not name to give him any extra attention or fame that this person might be seeking, was arrested outside the home of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh yesterday. Once apprehended, he was found carrying a gun, knife, and pepper spray. He told officers that he wanted to give his life purpose, so he purchased a gun and other items with the intention of breaking into Kavanaugh's home, killing the justice, and then offing himself. And this is all because he was upset about the leak of a recent Supreme Court draft decision, which would then give states back the power to choose whether or not women could have an abortion after a certain period of time. Also, the man believed that Kavanaugh would later side with the Second Amendment, which would loosen gun control laws. So in this guy's mind, in order to make sure the Supreme Court would not overturn Roe versus Wade, he thought the best thing to do was, you know, just go out and kill a Supreme Court justice who might be in favor of doing so. Sounds like a real logical decision. And this really just comes down to all the danger that we all knew could potentially happen when this decision was leaked. More than likely, it was one of the clerks of a liberal judge, such as Sotomayor or Breyer. Now, I'm not saying that they would have wanted this to happen, but by leaking this decision, of course, they definitely knew it would cause an uproar, a lot of protests outside these judges' houses, perhaps, and with these, they knew there might be a possibility to make the justices cave to the pressure. So I really do hope that they are able to figure out who leaked the decision and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now to President Biden's credit, he did condemn the actions of the armed man and said that he would support legislation that would fund increased security 
for the high court and judges as well. Now to this, I wouldn't say that it's something that we necessarily should have to do. You know, using more taxpayer money to secure judges or other elected officials, making sure that they're safe. After all, without this leak, none of this really happens anyways. The fact is, whoever leaked the document knew that heavy pressure would definitely be placed on the conservative judges to pretty much cave in and perhaps weaken their position on the issues and then not even overturn it. Again, I don't think, or at least I hope they didn't think something like this would happen, that they would get killed, but it definitely put all their lives in danger. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris, on the other hand, failed to even acknowledge the event ever happened. She spoke last night in an event called the Summit of the Americas in California, where she pretty much mostly talked about the root causes of the U.S. southern border crisis, which pretty much is the Biden administration. Of course, she did deflect the blame on that. At no time, though, despite having lots of time to do so, did she ever make a statement or condemn the man outside Kavanaugh's home. Could she have just not known about it happening? Perhaps that might just be her excuse. <laughs> <laughs> In some other news, House lawmakers voted to change the minimum age to buy semi-automatic weapons from 18 up to 21, which of course then received praise from the White House press secretary. Green John Pierre tweeted, Thank you, Speaker Pelosi in the House for passing bipartisan legislation to strengthen gun laws and protect our children. Soon, the House will do more to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. We continue to work hard with both parties, Republicans and Democrats, she's saying anyways, to save lives and stand up for families. This bipartisan piece of legislation, as she so puts it, passed by a vote of 223 to 204, mostly along party lines. House Republicans shot back at Democrats for passing their partisan bill, with Lauren Boebert saying that you better believe she's going to have a way to protect herself and, of course, will continue to carry. To her, guns are the great equalizer. House Republican Jim Jordan also slammed Democrats, saying that they don't trust law-abiding American citizens. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Massey was right on target when he said red flag laws take all guns from some people and they do so without due process. This bill takes some guns from all people, but Democrats say, don't worry, we're not out to get the Second Amendment. Really? Here's what Representative Cicilline said in committee last week. Spare me the, the BS about constitutional rights. Here's what Representative Jones said last week in committee. If the filibuster obstructs us, we will abolish it. If the Supreme Court objects, we will expand it. We will not rest until we have taken weapons out of circulation in our communities. Each and every day, we will do whatever it takes, whatever it takes. They are out to get the Second Amendment. The right of the American people, the right of we the people, to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's what bothers them. They don't trust we the people. They're smarter than us. They're better. Than, they don't trust law-abiding American citizens. They do not trust them. And that's what, that, is, that is what is so wrong with the direction we're going with this legislation, the legislation they're going to bring to the floor tomorrow. We have seen they don't trust Americans to exercise their First Amendment liberties. Now they're going after their Second Amendment liberties. And that red flag law that they're going to bring up tomorrow goes after their Fifth Amendment due process rights that we enjoy as American citizens. That's, is why, we, that's why we should oppose this legislation and the legislation tomorrow. And I hope, as my friend from Florida said, I hope the United States Senate doesn't go down this red flag trail that they are now on. Now, this was also a pretty worthless bill to pass as it stands absolutely zero chance of making it through the Senate as the Senate is actually working on their own bill, focusing mainly around improving mental health programs, enhancing background checks, and finally improving security at schools. But on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also ring the notification bell. That way you will be the very first to be notified when I do release a future video. And until next time, as always, have a wonderful day and stay informed, my friends.